let's start with an overview of the app. As usual, the app has to be downloaded and installed from the App Store. With the first start after the installation, the software automatically searches for cameras in the reachable networks. In this case, we are connected to a wireless LAN with our iPhone or iPad and the app finds directly the cameras. With a click onto the Go button, we get the dialog where we can choose and integrate the cameras. Now we only have to enter username and password and the application starts immediately after pressing the connect button. The app starts with the live view of the selected camera. A lot of functions and information are already available, which will be covered more in detail in the course of this tutorial. For now, we want to get an overview and talk about the control concept. Some of the buttons of the app have a white triangle in the lower right corner. The triangle shows that the button has a second function, what means that we distinguish between a short tap and a long hold of the button. First we want to press and hold the button until we get the camera management dialog. Here we can add new cameras. This can be done easily by pressing the plus button. Beforehand, we select the group the camera shall be related to – door station, internal camera, external camera or other camera. Now press the plus button and a new dialog opens where we can search for cameras or enter the camera data manually. With the magnifier we can start the camera search. Then we could select a camera by opening a drop down list. Right now I want to enter the camera data manually, therefore I press the button for the manual integration. After that I can enter the camera name, IP address, username and password. Courtyard 10 8 25 163 admin MEI NSM. In the lower part of this dialog we can select a reference picture. If we do not do something there, it will be the first picture what is coming from the camera what is used as reference picture. If we want to select and modify this picture, we first have to say whether we work on the overview reference picture or on the detail reference picture. This will be done with the slider. When the slider symbol shows the mountain symbol, we work on the overview reference picture. When it shows the head symbol, we work on the detail reference picture. With a tip onto the grey field, we get a full screen camera picture. Due to the fact that we want to define the overview reference picture now, this is already the right view and we can return to our dialog with a simple finger tap. Next, we want to define the detail reference picture. This can be done by pulling the slider into the right position and tapping into the grey field. In the full screen picture that we get, we select the required view with a two finger gesture and return with a tap of your finger. After that, both reference pictures are defined. By pressing the camera button longer, we could add cameras. With the same dialog we can also select which camera we want to monitor. Only tap on the camera name. With the slider we have the opportunity to define if we want to select from the list of names, overview reference pictures, detail reference pictures or live pictures. With a short tap onto the camera button, we can also switch quickly from camera to camera. With a simple tap into the live picture, we can activate full screen. With the same thing again, we return to the standard view. More details regarding the live page will be explained in the following video tutorials. There is always the possibility to inform yourself by pressing the question mark button. There is a tooltip for every functionality. If you press on the tooltip, another window opens with a comprehensive help. 
By tapping into the background, you can return back to the standard view. In addition to the live view, there is also the player view and the event view. You can change to the player view with a swipe to the left. Here we can play back recordings and we can do researches in the recordings. The vertical sliders for the image settings on the left side and for the volume on the right side are similar in the live and in the player view. With simply pulling the slider, we can set the picture brightness, for instance. All these settings are valid for the image of the app, but not made directly in the camera. By double tapping the slider, you can reset the settings to the default value. The horizontal zoom slider is existing in the live view, player view and event view. There is also another video tutorial for the player view coming. There you will get more information about details of the player page. And of course we have the context related help that can be opened with the question mark button. Let's change now with a swipe to the event view. Here we can see the event pictures of the integrated cameras. Beforehand, the button with the storage card symbol must be pressed. A double tap on the event picture opens the respective event in the player view, so that it can be played back immediately. In the event view, we can also monitor the live pictures from the cameras. To activate this function, we have to press the camera button. Then we have to pull the horizontal slider with the mountain symbol to the right until it gets red. While doing this we can see that the symbol itself is also changing. What this means and what are the further functions of the event view can be seen in the respective video tutorial. So far, for now, the overview of the new Mobotics app. We hope you enjoyed the video tutorial and would be happy if you have also a look onto the other tutorials. Thank you.